Okay, so this is a bit of a forewarning on this. This is an anime that has caught a lot of people's attention. And by that, I mean it has... <sighs> There's a lot of shit in this anime that's pretty heavy. Not gonna lie. It's pretty, it's, you know, pretty <sighs> heavy in terms of its context and its content and everything. And um, the name of this anime is, of course, Goblin Slayer, which I told Nick about. And I heard people talking about the opening the opening episode of this, the first episode. And um, from all intents and pur- for all intents and purposes, a lot of people say that this anime is the it's the pretty much the 18 plus anime that a lot of people have been waiting for. You know, there's been anime that have come out that have been like the super edgy stuff. You know, it's like like it's ones that from what a lot of people have said, is trying too hard. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of anime out there that say they, uh, that it's just like, oh, they're trying too hard to be edgy here. It's just like, oh, oh, yeah, you got to have your stereotypical, like, so crazy when, person going on a rampage. I was going to say, when you say edgy, what do you mean exactly about I mean, edgy? Do you I, mean, like, killing all the main characters and, like, mm, shock factor? Or do you mean, like, actually, like, dark, like, you dark, know, dudes like, in robes and... Well, a little bit of both. Skulls and um, there was actually and one that came out, I believe, last year called uh, King's Game. Oh. Uh, King's Game. It was a. It was pretty much uh, Hunger Games meets meets uh, Japanese high school. Everyone was sent these Are you orders. Battle Royale. Kind of. Except, <laughs> except instead of except you know in terms of you what, know no 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 in terms of yeah. what I mean by a Japanese high school nowadays. What I mean by nowadays is like your cell phone is your life oh, pretty okay. much half the time. It's so like All modern these, battle royale. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Uh, okay, so I'll so, just say like Hunger Games is one of those things where I uh, I get kind of like defensive if people start to be like, oh, it's like Hunger Games, and I'm like, or battle royale because Dude, i know battle hunger royale games came essentially first, and here's the thing about hunger, that uh, yeah, here's the thing games about that though it's first royale. exposure it's first exposure most people's first exposure to stuff like that is hunger games yeah it's just like a lot it's, of people's first exposure i was exposure. like a hipster and i was like i watched battle royale before hunger games was a thing you know? so. okay so there you go to you That's battle royale moment. is the thing to you battle royale is <laughs> yeah. the, the big thing and i understand that also, if you haven't watched Battle Royale, but you like the Hunger Games and you like more mature things, I 100% recommend you go checking out Battle Royale. Well, Battle Royale is the is the R-rated like, version of the Hunger Games shit. that shit. I think we should have gotten. Yeah, I mean, it's it's bad fucking ass. Well, like, yeah, and a lot of well, here's the thing, where Battle Royale was good with its stuff and a lot of the stuff that happened in it made sense. Hmm. Stuff that happened in King's Game made no sense. It was just stuff that happened just for base shock factor and uh, just like just like ultimate just like ultimate shocking stuff that's happening, dark stuff, and um, you know the main char- all the main characters dying, all this and that, and it just didn't have the same effect because I didn't care about these characters. I was not invested in any way. Yeah. And everything that was happening was stuff that I had seen before. And <clears throat> not to say that that stuff still isn't shocking and it's just under different circumstances things have to be presented under different circumstances in order for it to truly hit people with, you know, with the same gusto that it had before. Yeah. And a lot of people have said that this is the anime this year this season that uh people are saying is the one that's going to be remembered because you know, you remember Attack on Titan came yeah. out. I was going to say, the last time that I actually got really into an anime that had a lot of hype behind it, and I got into it, like, earliest, the earliest I've actually gotten into a new one, because it was actually before they started to, uh, you know, do an English dub, and nobody had signed for the English dub yet. It was before Funimation picked it out, and that was Attack on Titan. Fair enough. And it yeah. was like... I, at the time, it was like, you know, uh, my ex and her friends were watching it, and they were like, it's really good. You should check it out. And then I caught, like, a middle episode that they were watching, and I was like, it was one of the ones where the, the general gives, like, a speech to everybody. Oh, yeah. And he's pretty much, look, like, you can go home to your family, like, you know, but if we don't stop this, 
yeah, you'll only have tonight with them pretty much. So good fucking luck, you know, like it's like, or you can fight and we have more time basically. Yeah. And just like the, something about that speech, it like gave me chills and shit. And I was like, this is really well written. Well, it's true. It was, it was very true. Yeah. I mean, and then I went back and started watching it and they all laughed, uh, about how like invested I got in Levi as a character and stuff. I was like, he's my favorite character. He's just a fucking <laughs> badass. You know? He is. And I was like, if they kill Levi, I will stop watching the show immediately. Unless he dies towards the end of the plot in some major sacrifice that leads to them winning this war against the Titans. And that, in that case, I'll be okay with it, you know, but like, Fair enough. if you kill Levi, riot, basically, you know, he's like my, <laughs> like a uh, freaking. Most uh, people are that way. Most Walking people, Dead. Levi is their favorite character. Yeah. Them and Mikasa. And uh, everybody was uh, cracking up in the episode where he actually um, finally fights uh, the female Titan. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that Jana like paused the video and was like, I just have to point out like the amazing, like the ma- how amazing it is that like Nick's just been grinning from ear to ear for this entire time. And I'm just like, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> like this is the shit. Yeah. But I, I so, haven't actually yeah. watched anything past season one though, since they took forever to put out season two. I just haven't got back. Well, into yeah, it, they were doing the live I really liked movie. It. And then it became a thing where I was like telling people that I worked with, I was like, dude, like if we get attack on Titan merch, like that's going to sell. Like crazy, I was like, "This anime is going to blow up when it comes and it to did. the U- the U.S." And I called it like it blew the fuck up, and then it got that fan base where you're just like, "All right, I don't want to be associated with other people who like this." <laughs> <laughs> so I've it's like there. you kind of just keep it a secret, and you're like, you're so, "If somebody's like, you like Attack on Titan," I'm like, "Yeah, no, it's, it's maybe. pretty cool." But it's like uh, you don't uh, like actively go around being like, "Yeah, I like Attack on Titan" for fear of somebody being like. Aah! just being like oh god my ears you know. yeah it I, i've been there and um honestly dude i you know every year every year has that anime that nobody will stop talking about and this one so far has been the one this season you know every season has its highlights yeah um you know um so the previous big one i got in on before uh this um i actually got more into it because i picked up the manga and the manga is definitely superior to the show from what I've seen so far on that one, but it's Tokyo Ghoul. Mm. Tokyo Ghoul's pretty badass, but the show kind of it censors the shit out of stuff that happens and straight up cuts characters and content and stuff, and it's just kind of like, it's like, wow, they really kind of just butchered this like plot and stuff up like you know, to make it what they wanted it to be in the anime. It's like similar enough, but still butchered to where you're just like, why would I watch this instead of just reading the manga that has the extra cool stuff in it? You know, that, a lot of people you know. were the same way about the first season of Full Metal Alchemist, even though the original creator himself was happy with what they did in the first season of Full Metal Alchemist. And then the second season, Brotherhood, they did pretty much a full, like a full, like straight on through, no, like no cuts. Yeah. Well, uh, see, I'm, I'm kind of back and forth on like uh, anime and manga. Like I, I'll take it objectively. Like Death Note, I love the manga. It tells you more about what they're thinking the whole time, you know. Uh-huh. Um, Attack on Titan. Everybody was reading the manga and reading ahead, and they're like, "Oh, you won't believe what happens." I'm like, "Don't fucking tell me about it. I don't want it spoiled for me when it gets to the show." You know, when mm-hmm. it, like the show has got the music and the animation, and you know the voice work and everything was like so good that I was like, I want to see it in full motion and see it actually happen. I was like, I'm not going to read ahead. And everybody was like, you should just read ahead. And I'm like, I'm, why would I read ahead and spoil it for myself? I'm so invested <laughs> in this anime, dude. I was like, no, like I, I want to know what happens in the anime. I want to see it in animated form. So I would only go back and read the manga after I had seen that part in the anime, you know, just to see what differences there were. There are some pretty cool little differences there. Like the manga is a little more gory. Yeah. But, like, for the most part, the yeah. anime's animation and sound and everything makes it so much more worth it with Attack on Titan. There you go. Well. <sighs> Same thing with Bleach. Okay. Bleach's music style and the animation, seeing the fights actually play out in full motion is badass. Mm-hmm. You know, they're really similar to each other. <laughs> like, at least from what I've read of the manga, they're really similar. But There you are. Well. We have the uh, we have the first episode of uh, Goblin Slayer queued up here. Just as a forewarning, I I put at the beginning of this episode I put a uh, I put up I'm gonna put up a little thing. Mature content warning type thing. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So just as a forewarning. 
So everyone out there, this is uh, rated mm, uh, M for mm, if you're young, you probably shouldn't watch this. Shut up, butter buns. <laughs> all right, so I just like that intro. It's a good intro. <laughs> so all right, we got it queued up here. Let's see what happens. By the way, we are watching this subbed, not dubbed. Sorry. I don't think there is a dub yet, is there? Uh, there is now. Okay. But. You have, you have received a party invite. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, hey, I want to join our guild as soon as you make your character. Like, I, I just started this game. <laughs> like, it's cool, man. Just join the guild. All right. All right. <laughs> Every MMO ever. Anime waifu confirmed, maybe. <laughs> Jesus. Already. If Ben was down here, he'd be like, She's you ain't me, motherfucker. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, he's a melee guy, so he has some extra hit points. Does his sword just glance off the wall like in Dark oh, Souls? Oh, no. <laughs> he fucked up. I've been there. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. shit. Yeah. Oh, bro. I don't know if healing miracles are going to work on him. <laughs> what? No. No. Woo! Oh. Oh. God dang. What? Why? <laughs> Damn! Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, is that oil? Yep! <laughs> oh, gasoline! Damn! Not really. No. <laughs> She's not going to be okay for a long time, if at all. Yeah, I'd yeah, say I that too. <laughs> he's seen too many. He's seen one too many horror movies. He knows what's up. Mm -hmm. Huh? Children. God dang, dude. That that guy's a badass. <laughs> Who, Goblin Slayer? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I know two things. One's I'm still an adventurer, and two, that guy's a badass. <laughs> Chainmail. That's good. Fair enough. Damn. That's some pretty hardcore shit in that, dude. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he, him slaying the kids and everything. And I'm surprised this is as popular as it is. Really? Yeah, because um, just in today's climate, people are like, it's completely unnecessary to depict horrible things like rape and stuff like that. Well, and it's like, keep in mind, dude, this is Japan we're talking about. Yeah. Whereas yeah. they are not as beholden to sensitivity like we are here in the states. Mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, there's people, you know, there's, I guarantee you, there's a lot of people who are, you know, writing in angry letters about this episode. But that's the thing is it's like, it's horror. And the point of horror is to horrify you. Mm -hmm. And rape is a horrifying thing. It is. And, and it's like, if you're going to depict things that truly scare people, why are you going to say that you have to censor out some of the scariest things in life? Well, it's because people feel that they shouldn't be exposed to that. It, here's my thinking on the whole thing. It's like it, it, people should be sheltered and then they should be, you know, completely like unprepared. Yeah. Unprepared. Should something horrible actually ever happen to them? Basically it's like, whereas like that's the thing is like the reason soldiers are such badasses in like real militaries like our military and Russia's military etc and stuff you know is that to an extent they're desensitized to stuff yeah like, into horror like some of them aren't and that's why 
you know, they come back completely fucked up, like from stuff that they witness and everything. But well, well, yeah, I mean, like the that... true badasses are the ones that don't let themselves be like shaken by the horrors of the world, and pretty much, yeah. It, so, I don't know. I had a I had a friend who served. Uh, he served um, in. He served in the military, and then later on, he actually did work in uh, the Peace Corps and everything. He saw horrible things when he was stationed in Iraq. You know, he saw these prisoners of war, these POWs, Iraqi police who had been kidnapped by the by the terrorists, and had been dismembered, and he had to clean that up. He actually talked about one. It was a family of four, including uh, it was a father. It was a a man, his wife, their six year old da- their six year old daughter, and their six month old son. All had been all had been executed using debt cord, and to me that is some of the most heinous shit I could ever think to witness. Mm -hmm. And not only did he witness that and come, like, he'll tell me about this stuff as as nonchalantly as, like, you telling me about how, uh, how you had a, how you had a good practice today. Yeah. And it's because he's desensitized to it and, you know, people think of that as him being a monster. No, yeah, that's they just... they think of that as, a, like, a bad thing. No, it, it's it, like you have to be Some of the because... people that protect us have to be desensitized to that type of thing in order to be able to offer the protection that they do. Yeah, and uh, and he during his work it's in the like, Peace Corps, he... Go ahead. It's like this Goblin Slayer guy, you know? Like, yeah. In order for him to be able to do what he did to protect that girl and to save the other girl. He has to be desensitized to this horrible shit and be able to be like, yeah, it's better to put this girl out of her misery because she's already dead and she's suffering anyways. That's a horrible ass thing to have to kill another human to save them from suffering, basically, because that's the only option remaining. Like, well, he did it like it was nothing, pretty much. Yeah, and... My, uh, but... Also, I'm already mad because they killed the witch. (laughs) They killed the cute witch. So like everybody's probably laughing at me because I was like, that's like the cute girl that like I would be like, hey, you're cute. And they're everybody who's seen the episodes already like, ha, 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 fuck you. <laughs> well, the series is just getting started, man. I mean, who's to say they won't pick up more party members along the way? Yeah. I mean, at, I was like, why do you have to make the witch you were going to kill in the beginning so cute? <laughs> because that's why you got yeah. invested in you got invested into her character you because hey yeah because she didn't even say kawaii. anything and it already made it horrible well she didn't say anything other than her fireball spell and it still made it like no god damn it no <laughs> like that that early into the series well yeah I mean it and uh, back on the subject of like horrible things happening um, um my friend he also when he was in the Peace Corps. He went over and he witnessed uh, some horrible shit in uh, in uh, you. I uh, know, not Uganda. It was a. Um, it was it was the Congo, and um, there's a very bad problem in the Congo with with gang rapes, and it's military and uh, it's military and uh, you know um, rebels all taking out their frustrations on villages that they think are loyal to certain causes but instead it's just villages full of people just trying to live their lives yeah and he witnessed a sea it was pretty much a sea of bodies is what he described it as it was nothing but a bunch of children who didn't have parents that were sleeping in hovels in the city uh to protect against uh to protect against the rebels trying to you know trying to steal them and make them into child sol- children soldiers. Yeah. And when you realize just how bad the world still is in certain in certain places and I hear about all these people complaining about their first that's just like you know I I complain about some shit but whenever I try and pretend that my life is terrible I imagine other people's lives out there and what they're living in. And you know what? People and people I've heard I actually heard somebody say this <clears throat> and it about made my it about made my stomach turn. A person said a person said this. They said they said, 
oh, you're going to tell me about all these people out there, about there, out there who have all these horrible things happening to them and all this and all that, you know, you know, like kids in African countries who are forced to shoot their parents and all this and all that. It's like, and I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, you think about their lives, and they're like, and it's like, uh, and they actually said, but that's not me. That's not me. And I'm like, I know. I'm trying to make you realize that that that's not you. That it makes that you are way better off than most people out there. A kid who is in that situation would gladly sacrifice anything that they had, any body part that they had to trade places with you right now. Yeah. And they were just like... like, I don't necessarily think about stuff like that, per se, but sometimes when I feel really bad about myself, I'm just like, well, could be worse. At least I'm not strapped to a chair somewhere with somebody pulling my fingernails off. Well, yeah. (laughs) Crap like that. Well, but you see, dude, there's there's something I always... I learned, and it made me realize... Just how good my life is. There, the situation, no matter how bad you think it is, can always be worse. Yeah, and it's almost more depressing to think about other people's situations being so bad and the futility that. What can we even do about that? Well, it's society, dude. Society has to march forward in those areas in order for things to get better. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at. I mean, you look at how Asia used to be. For such a long time, the constant wars and land, you know, and uh, land. Uh, you look at the fall of the Ming Dynasty and uh, the and the uh, Mongolian conquests, killing millions upon millions of people. You know, it, I believe just from the uh, Mongol conquest, around twenty five million people died. And keep in mind, this isn't modern day. This is back in like, this is back a long time ago. This is back when the world population was nowhere near what it is now. Yeah. I mean, if you'd have, if you'd have heard that one man was responsible for the deaths of 25 million people nowadays, what would we do? What would happen if we found out that, oh, this one man right here in his conquest to do all these terrible things, you know, he killed 25 million people. What would happen? Well, if you think about it... To an extent, there are people in the world sort of like that right now. I know. Um, Such as uh, the previous leader of North Korea is technically indirectly responsible for the deaths of a lot of people due to their horrible, like, you know, conditions and starvation and lack of resources and work working people to death and stuff. Same thing with Chairman Mao. And it's like, what what do we... That's the thing, is what do we do about that? We can't really do anything about that as ourselves. Like, the the only thing you can do is... Join the military, become a complete and total badass, and hope that at some point your country gives you permission to go over there and do something directly about it. Yeah. And and at the same time, that sucks because mostly you're going to be killing people that um, are not really all on the government side in a place like that, you know? It's like you're going to be killing the people you're kind of there to save to in order to save them. It sucks. <laughs> this shit. Yeah. It's... It's a shitty world that we live in sometimes. Yeah. You're definitely going to have to put a warning before this video, though. Like, warning. Like, the discussions and the reaction in this video are for mature audiences only. Yeah. Like, if you are sensitive to any kind of, like, you know, really heinous shit, you should probably not watch this one. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a pretty heavy video. I'm probably... I might... Age, I'm going to age-gate this video. I'm probably going to age-gate it. It might be a good idea. So... Just to let people know, like, seriously, like, mm-hmm. yeah, we, we talked about and saw some shit here that, like, I know there are people, like, in the world today that would just be like, holy shit, I did not need to see that, you know? And, oh, yeah, like, yeah. And like I said, this isn't for everybody. And for people yeah. who get offended by by seeing this, hey, we warned you. Yeah, I mean, like, there, there's going to be at least a couple warning. people in the comments that are like, well, oh, I didn't think it would be that bad. You guys have never done anything that bad. And it's like, oh, we fucking told you, man. Yeah. So Yeah, what do you want from us? All right. Well. You know, like, you shouldn't have done this video. And it's like, oh, we wanted to watch this anime. Everybody said it was good. So, okay. My opinion, like, I, I don't really judge a series based off of just the first episode. I give it at least three to four. Uh-huh. Um, because there's been several series where the first couple are, eh, but then it becomes amazing. Um, All right. So, so like, so far I can't give this 100%, like, I'm definitely in or out, like, but, uh, 
just my opinions on the first episode so far are damn it they killed the cute girl that guy's <laughs> a badass and this but is definitely you, a fucked up anime <laughs> but but would you I'm say I'm at least glad is... they didn't go full hentai and that they censored it out cuz it, it doesn't need to be a booby anime yeah, in addition no, to like no, girls no. getting raped like no that's I mean, that's it, uh, it, it, it it kept it seriousness and that's good yeah it doesn't glorify it it instead shows it for what it is mm-hmm. a truly one of the most truly heinous acts that has ever been that's committed in the world mm-hmm. and honestly man i when i when i was asked for us to watch this i did not know what to expect and yeah me either I, all, all, all nate told me is like there's an anime out called goblin slayer and i'm like i'm in I was like, one of my favorite bands is called Necro Goblicon, and they're just a band that plays metal about goblins. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> like the, the title sounds metal as fuck, so let's do it. So, all right. Well, if you all want us to continue doing this, I mean, this is just a little bit of a test thing. If you want to see us do more of this, let us know in the comments down below. And, yeah, I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. And we will see you all in the next video. Peace out. Thank you.